Hello, um, my name is Tim King. Um, I'm the editor of European Voice. Um, we are here at a. I always get the title Comment Visions event, which is jointly organised by European Voice and Euronews with support from Shell. Um, could you give me and my colleagues an idea? How many of you have been at a Comment Visions event before? And how many haven't? So we've got significantly different uh, influx of people. Good. Um, I was going to say this is different from, from the usual uh, Comment Visions event, uh, partly because of the format, partly because of the length of time we have, um, or we did have. Um, but um, since many of you are unfamiliar with that normal format anyway, it doesn't really seem to matter. Um, Sir David. I'm hoping all of you have got one of these programs, partly because it saves me from the, from the tedious job of, of, of explaining who everyone is, um, least of all me. Um, the idea is that today we're discussing um, the decarbonisation of transport, uh, whether Europe can do it, wants to do it, will be able to do it, and under what circumstances. Um, one of the ways in which we're departing from, from a normal format is that we don't normally allow anyone to give uh, to mess around with that newfangled thing called PowerPoint. Um, but since so what actually what normally happens at, uh, at events like these is that and I can remember being in this building about four or five years ago and it happening. We were talking about climate change and insurance. And, um, and what happens is that people quote at you from the floor. They quote Sir David King at you. Um, and we're doing away with that now um, and getting the real thing. Um, so uh, straight, as it were, from the horse's mouth, if that's not too rude. Um, so, can I, before we get to the real speakers, invite you to turn your mobile phones off, preferably, to silence at least. Um, part of the camera doesn't like the sound of mobile phones, and nor do I. Um, what we're going to, the way we're going to play this, Sir David, to start off by laying out some work that, hence that um, future of mobility roadmap. Delighted to have here the Deputy Director General um, for, I was going to say transport, but do I have to call you Deputy Director General for MOVE? Yes. No. Okay. Deputy Director General for MOVE. Um, and um, uh, and some, Sultan Kazatz, I will, will lay out um, the Commission's thinking. Then, because I'm slightly wary of you people having had a hard work at the Sustainable Energy Week. Um, I'm wary that your energy levels may drop. So then I'm going to check that you're still awake. Uh, and then we will take a tour of the rest of our panel who, who are fighting their corner, or we've cast them in the panel, um, for uh, different sectors of the transport industry. I'm now going to repeat a question that I asked some moments ago. Who has a spare seat next to them? So I'm trusting my colleague back can note that and guide any, any later comers than Sir David um, to an available seat. Uh, Sir David, without more, more ado, could you set the scene for us? Thank you. Uh, there we go. Thank you very much. Uh, Tim, delighted to be here. Um, what, what I'm going to do is just set out um, the uh, contents and the general direction of this roadmap that we have just published. It's, uh, it's the first stage in developing a scenario uh, map out to mid-century based on our need to defossilize uh, our economies as we move through the next 40 years. So let me just say quickly, defossilize that means uh, that for each of the sectors that we look at, whether it's the built environment, 
whether it's industry, agriculture, or, or transport, we need to be examining how we will move those sectors into a defossilized economy by mid-century. Um, and we're doing this within the Smith School of Enterprise and the Environment at Oxford, so I'm going to very quickly just set the scene on that and hopefully also get... No, I don't control this. Can I have the next picture? Nope. It seems I can't. Um, do I get to move things? No. These are just arrows for no purpose. No, you went for that man there. Ah. <clears throat> Could I have the next? There we go. So this, this is a, uh, 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 an indicator of what this new school looks like. I don't believe there's anything like it in any other university institution in the world. And at the same time, I believe it's going to be an essential part of all universities as we move forward in time. It's an interdisciplinary hub within a large university. So if you like, it's a playground for people from every discipline, from economics and philosophy across to engineering, chemistry, etc. And within that playground, we provide a means of establishing a roadmap into futures which are sustainable, 21st century futures which are sustainable. So our objective is to find solutions to 21st century problems and to work with the academic world. So I'm now going around the green outer edge of the Frisbee. These are our stakeholders. The academic world for the knowledge base, governments for the regulatory and obligatory systems required to deliver the solutions, civil society as the consumers uh, and the voters, and finally the private sector for delivering solutions into the market. So those are our stakeholders. We have a very wide range of topics which include ecosystem services, food production, climate change, etc. And we have an, a series of engines in blue which are a ser series of centers for activity. So we have six centers. We have been in existence since the 1st of October 2008. So we're very new to the scene. So far we have these six centers. And one of those is labeled low carbon mobility. And I'm talking about the work that that center has been doing over the last year and a half. And then right at the heart of the school is a futures directorate. In the futures directorate, we pick on a topic at a time and work intensively with perhaps 100 experts drawn from around the world over a two year period to develop a roadmap in detail showing how we can build scenarios that are sustainable over the next 40 years around the program of work. And the first of these programs is what we're now discussing, the, the future of low carbon mobility. So quite simply, if I now ask the, for the next slide, could, could I have the, thank you. Um, if we look at the total global emissions of carbon dioxide equivalents, so this includes methane and other gases, expressed as carbon dioxide equivalent, it's 49 billion tons of carbon dioxide per annum is what we human beings on the planet are adding to our environment annually. Of that 50 billion tons or so of, of carbon dioxide equivalent, about 36, 37 billion tons is carbon dioxide itself. If we then look where those emitters are coming from globally, we see that the transport sector is about 13% of the total. The agricultural sector is about 14% of the total. Now, because agriculture produces from live animals a large amount of methane, also from rice growing, for example, a large amount of methane, the agricultural sector will be unable to produce a significant fall in carbon dioxide and greenhouse gas emissions over the coming years. This puts the burden on the other sectors indicated here, and transport will therefore have to effectively defossilize by mid-century. That's the challenge we're addressing here. How do we manage to defossilize the transport sector and at the so same time manage to improve the well-being of our communities? So there's the dual challenge that we have. 
if we look within the transport sector, we can see how it breaks down into road, air, and sea transport. Um, and despite the global interest in the media in air travel, you will notice that uh, domestic air travel uh, is about 5% of that total, and international air travel about 7%.